So I was watching a YouTuber that I, I enjoy, and he was talking about AD&D, which again, I enjoy listening to uh, people talk about AD&D. Don't play it much anymore, but I do enjoy people talking about it. <laughs> um, and uh, this, this individual was talking about, you know, rule zero and people changing the rules and homebrew um, and GM fiat. But the, uh, the homebrew thing was what struck me because at, at one point this individual held up a holy Bible, which I'm not going to hold up, but uh, and said, would you would you rule zero this? And at first that that sort of comparison uh, threw me, right? Because I was like, mm, that's a really weird place to go, right? You were you were comparing a, a moral code and a template for someone living within their religious uh, bounds to a game, <laughs> and I thought that is that is wacky. Like that's not that's not appropriate. Not inappropriate and like, oh, that's, you know, icky or what, you know, make, make whatever comparison you want. But I just meant that's not a comparison I would think makes any sense. Except, I sort of, I, I must think it does now. Um, you know, there is uh, amongst, <laughs> I think, a, a, a crew of OSR folks and, um, you know, certainly, certainly a couple of uh, guys that, I, I watch a, a lot on YouTube. There's a sort of a reverence for, you know, this old school vibe and more than even a vibe. It's a reverence for, well, you know, how Gary and Dave played back in the day, back in 1979 or whatever it was, right? You know, whatever, whatever time that they're invoking, like the early seventies, the mids, you know, um, and it is, it's sort of a, a reverent, you know, and we are going to follow this this plan, and this is the way. This is the book. Um, you know, and and even indeed, someone you know is he held up the DMG and said, "This is the source of all wisdom that pertains to D and D." And I was thinking, well, is there some is there a value in that pure play? Like, just you know, we play by the rules. These are the rules outside of say tournament play. Um. Is there some, you know, magical, not even magical, just objective goodness in playing the game as the designer meant to play it? Now, I am terrible to answer this because, unfortunately, I am a inveterate tweaker and home brewer and so on. And so, you know, I obviously have an answer already, uh, which is, no, I don't think there's inherent value in it. Um, but but I, I I wanted to think about that a little bit and and as I thought about it, so so one thing to realize and this is sort of I, I just don't think it holds up I don't think the idea that you know you can take any game and go well there's one set of rules and that single set of rules is the set of rules now if you're playing competitively that's absolutely the case right if you're playing you know. But if you're playing a tabletop role-playing game, that, that's where I want to stop that discussion. We're playing tabletop role-playing game. It's not competitive. We are not playing Adventurers League or some communal league or whatever. We are playing at, you know, at your table, your game, your campaign at your table. Is there any value in the pure rule set versus, you know, a, a rule set which is tweaked for your table? Now, here's the thing, as, as I thought about that. realize that this is the, this is my basic D&D. This is my old school D&D, blue book D&D. And I think this this was 19 maybe 77. No, I didn't play until 1978, but I was instantly hooked, right? From that first jump, from that first game, I was hooked. And when I soon after learned that there was advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I begged someone to take me to the, the breastplate in Boardman to go buy it. Um, but here's the weird part. So you're playing this game, and this game only has three levels. You know, elves and dwarves are, are classes, races as class, right, as opposed to races as, as race, as modifiers to your character. Advanced D&D &D had 
so many more options, right? You had, you had race and a class you would pick. You had not only fighters, thieves, wizards, and clerics, but you also had paladins and rangers and illusionists and assassins. Super interesting stuff. But at first, you could only buy the player's handbook. The DMG did not come out until many months later. I don't know how many months exactly, but I remember getting the player's handbook, like, bam, when, when, it, when, it, when it, nearly when it came out. And we were excited and we wanted to play it. But there was no companion book to it right away. You did not have the DMG. So we played this game with those classes in a horrific amalgam of just, you know, right, of just working it out. You were homebrew from day one. If you wanted to play with the player's handbook on day one, you were playing a homebrew from day one. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons did not come out in a shiny three in a box set with three books and that you could play at, from the get-go. Those books came out at different times. The day you got the player's handbook, you were playing a homebrew. If you played with if you didn't wait the, the X months until the DMG came. So the two hit tables from over here with the monsters from here with a paladin and a half-orc fighter with that sexy 18 double zero or whatever strength that they roll. This was a homebrew. You were ho there is no there is no magical time where we weren't playing a homebrew. I suppose is my point. Um because if you wanted to play the day that thing came out, you were playing homebrew because you were trying to figure out how to mesh some set of this rules or your originals if you had them, which we didn't. I, I, I did not. Never, never, never have I touched the the magical or OD and D books. You were throwing this together. So I mean, even on day zero, I think there was homebrew, and I think. You know, right? And over the next decade, then, we just kept that going, right? We played and we added classes, we added races, items, spells, all custom to the table. You know, someone said, oh, I, I want to play a barbarian. Well, we didn't have Unearthed Arcana at that time. And frankly, I didn't love those rules when they did come. But, um, but we could play a barbarian. I said I'll make one for you. We can I can I can follow, you know, this the template for like a paladin, like how the, you know, at what levels do you get powers and so on. We can figure that out. Let's figure that out. What do you want the barbarian to be like? Spells and items and some were good and some were bad. Like some things that we did were great and they were fun. Some things were a little crappier and maybe didn't work. Some things might have been overpowered and didn't work, and we either changed them or we didn't know any better at the time, and we still played with them, but it was custom to our table. We had two, uh, you know, at the time, because we were all fairly young, but we had, um, you know, at, at some point in that, you know, as rolling out of elementary school and into junior high, I was playing at a table with two girls. And you know what I wasn't going to do? I wasn't going to impose any weird uh, 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 attribute modifiers to them because they wanted to play the fighters. So I'm like, sure. I mean, we'll throw that out. That's, that's, that, that rule doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. We're throwing that out. We just, we don't care. Done. Um, so we were always playing a homebrew of some sort. And over time, that grew and grew and grew, right? You had you had spells that were in the game and classes and races and a whole thing. And yeah, it was a horrific amalgam that if you came to my table, you would not recognize. You'd recognize D&D because the base game is the game. The actual mechanics and the rules are the game. But all the ancillary stuff would be different. 
And ultimately, we even started tweaking with the mechanics because because we didn't the brawling rules were sort of cumbersome. The psionic rules were you know garbage in in our minds. And is that an arrogance that somehow I know more than Gaga? Well, I mean, no. These guys, I think, were. Uh, I think I think it's evident to me that these guys at that time were sort of low key, like all low key sort of geniuses, and they all just sort of riffed off of each other and ended up making this amalgam of a really cool thing, which which never, <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't have come up with at 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 that time. I mean, when this all started, when when this all started, I was like eight. I go, <laughs> it was never gonna, you know, so. So I don't think I'm smarter than anybody, but I think for the table that I'm at and the table that I'm running, I do know 100% for that table, for those people right now, at this time. And maybe someone comes in and, have, and handles that table and they do a better job and that's fine. And then we'll use their rules, <laughs> right? I mean, that's that's okay. I don't think there's any problem with that. So I don't think I know better, but I think that, you know, some of that stuff just didn't work and it certainly didn't work at our table. And so we didn't use it or we used something different or we pulled something from a magazine or whatever, or something just looked cool. And so someone brought that. So, so I think we were always playing a homebrew and that, that then led itself later on to playing games like Hero, which are sort of very, you know, it, the mechanics are how do you make a homebrew almost, right? The mechanics are how do you fit these pieces together and link them together and then there's math and then poof and now you have a fantasy game in Hero. Um, so it led to that and then finally doing, again, getting dissatisfied with that, the way that that all linked together and then playing, you know, my own games. Um, so obviously for my table I am a, a home brewer and I am a game tweaker and I like to play pots and play with that so great but what about generally it, 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 it was my table the weird exception oh yeah you changed the rules what's what's wrong with you and the answer was no not at all I think that baked into this hobby baked into this hobby was the concept of changing things and making things and homebrewing things. Absolutely, right? I think you look at the pages of Dragon Magazine even, and you'll see Revised Monk. You'll see uh, Ecology of, of Monsters section, which sometimes added tweaks to monsters, which would not did not exist in the Monster Manual. White Dwarf. Oh my God, like that was, it, it was a different perspective even on the hobby as a whole. And so you would get some very interesting perspectives there. And then you'd get interesting variants and, and parts for your, your game in say White Dwarf. Every table in my, you know, every table in my, you know, I mean, not gigantic group of gamer people that I knew back in the day, but guarantee you through junior high, high school, and college, every table was slightly different. Every table. Every table had some differences. Now, again, we weren't playing anything tournament. We did not have, you know, some gigantic pool of DMs running a mega campaign or whatever. And in that case, yes, you should run the same rules. Whatever that rule set is, whatever that tweak custom rule set is, you, you, you should definitely be agreeing on the rules so that, you know, when my character moves from A to B, there's no difference. And my character's relative power level between A and B is the same thereabouts, right? That's when, we, that's when, you, that's when you, talked, uh, you talk about, oh, this is a killer DM or this is a Monty Hall D uh, DM, right? Every table's different. Every DM's different. Every group is different. And how they ultimately play the game is going to be different, I think, truly, that is baked into the hobby. I, I don't think there's any way around it. And you even see that now with all these different OSR, all these folks that have harkened back to this book or harkened back to the, the Red Book. Um, 
there's a different take on it. Very few, maybe one or two of those games have just said, yep, here's the old basic again, here you go, will you buy it please and then play this game? No. A lot of them are tweaking that rule set a bit and making their own twist and change. So even the OSR community is a homebrew community. They're just selling them. Good for them, by the way. <laughs> I, I never sold shit. <laughs> um, and again, strangely enough, I come back, and though I I was skeptical of the of the religious uh, example, would you would you homebrew this? And I thought, wait, that does that proves the point the other way. Because, yes, we already have homebrewed it. You have Catholics and Lutherans and Protestants, and you have Mormons, and you have the Jews are like, but we're playing the original D&D, &D. and everybody's like, nah, it's fine. I'm just going to homebrew this crap. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's absolutely the case. You would homebrew this because the original one didn't quite work for you somehow. So that's that's sort of my my take. I think, you know, I know that's not that's not quite a a rule. It's not rule zero exactly, but I think that the original discussion had a little bit of of homebrew in it, and it got me thinking about homebrew and is there you know is there value in some pure form of D and D? And I think the answer is no. I think I think the game's meant to be tweaked infinitely that's the joy that's that is half of the joy of it and and yeah strangely enough a religious analogy works pretty well so there you go all right thank you guys for indulging me for a few minutes and i appreciate it and i'll talk to you later bye-bye